Like, I'm Samantha. And here's what's happening at HMS. HMS. The art club has meetings coming up throughout the spring. Like, uh, check out the slide at the end of the announcements, like, for all the details. After a madcap march, the final four takes place this weekend. Like, and if you didn't even want, or, and if you won't even be taking the court, like, you need to break out those college stories, like, because Friday is like spirit day. And JJ is holding a drive for children's books. Turn gently used books in to your ELA teacher by April 1st. The Apex Games, like, they take place on Friday. Like, raise at least $50 to participate, like, in the Apex Games. And once you've raised $50, go raise a whole lot more. Like, you'll win more prizes. Like, it will be better, like, because of your efforts. Does your heart race every time you hear the assistant principal wants to see you? Well, like, next week, take a stress-free tip, like, down to the assistant, like, uh, like for principal's week. And be sure to thank them for all the lessons they've helped you learn. Like, even if you had to learn them the hard way. All right, I'm sick of this. Oh, my hair! <laughs> and that's the news. Here's, Here's what, what else is happening, happening at HMS. HMS. To this beautiful face. Wait, hold up. Maybe you should go camera so Kaden's not doing it. I went and did my undergraduate at the University of North Texas, but I got my master's degree at Southern Methodist University in Dallas. Well, I wanted to get a master's degree because I already had a bachelor's degree, and the way I decided on SMU was um, I knew one of the professors there and it was a really small music school instead of the really large music school I had gone to before. And I just wanted more of like a one-on-one -on -one or just smaller group setting to get that higher level degree so I could really work on being a better choir conductor. It was choral music history. I know that's super nerdy, but basically I had um, several semesters where we went all the way back to the earliest record of when anyone sang any kind of music. Um, this is like way, 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 way before Christ, way back ancient times. And it was really amazing to learn the progression of where everything started and how we got where we are today, even with pop music, not just classical music. What I had to do to prepare myself to go back and get a second degree, a master's degree, was I had to have several years of experience. So I'd been a choir teacher for six years already. And then I had to audition. So I had to submit video footage of myself, not only teaching choirs, but also conducting choirs, videos of myself singing at concerts, and just to kind of show that I was a great musician um, and that I was worthy of being accepted to the program. And I also had to take seven placement tests. Um, there were four tests about music history and three about music theory. And I had to go sit in a room and take like four or five hours worth of tests so they could decide where I should start when I started my graduate program. Um, no, actually, when I was applying for schools, um, I got accepted to the ones I applied for. When I was applying for my first degree, I applied to UNT and TCU, and they both accepted me, but I decided on UNT. And then I only applied to one school for graduate school, that was SMU, and that's because they were offering me a full scholarship, and I didn't want to pay any money for it. I can't show you any school spirit or sing a single thing about SMU because I was so busy, not only working on a graduate degree, commuting 80 miles round trip every day. I was also pregnant during that time and giving birth to a child. And so no, I honestly don't know a single fight song or motto or anything about my school. So yay SMU. <laughs> 
I guess the craziest tradition or thing that happened to me when I was at SMU is the fact that I was 30 years old. Most people there were getting their first degree. They were 18, 19, and I was pregnant with my daughter. And so I was clearly like, I stood out like a sore thumb, but it was really fun because I got to celebrate my 30th birthday with all these little 18 year olds. They threw a surprise baby shower for me one day. They kicked me out of the room and asked me to go do something during choir rehearsal because I was the assistant. And then really they were planning a big uh, surprise shower for me. So I guess like as far as traditions, what I remember the most was just the things surrounding the baby. The hardest part about being in graduate school was the commute. Um, I did. I lived right by Hillwood, but I commuted to downtown Dallas every single day. Um, one day it took me three hours to get there, just one trip, and then it would take about an hour and a half or two hours to get back. Sometimes I would have to stop to like get a meal or go to the bathroom like twice on one drive. <laughs> it was awful. Um, it was it was the sacrifice I made to go get a free degree and not have to move out of state or out of the city um, but that was that was very challenging the best thing about being in college for me is the friendships that you make. Um, there's still people that um, from both of my degrees, from UNT and SMU, that I still talk to on a regular basis. Um, we keep up. There's people, because I was a musician, there's people all over the world. There, um, a friend of mine from SMU sang the national anthem at the Super Bowl with the singing sergeants with the military. And I'm like, that girl and I, we were friends and we hung out and now she's on TV singing with the military in front of the whole nation and the Super Bowl, whole world, really. So just like lasting friendships, lasting memories. So something I think that not everyone knows is that you can get huge scholarships, even full scholarships for your singing voice and also for those who play instruments, if you're in band, for playing your instrument. Um, I got a big scholarship for my first degree at UNT and then at SMU, I got a full ride. SMU is a very expensive school. You're talking $40,000 a year. Ain't got the money. Ain't nobody got time for that. So um, I did get a full ride and I got paid. Um, I got paid like $444 a month, I remember, because I was the librarian. I kept track of the choir music library. Um, and so I actually, I did take out a few student loans just to help us because we ha already had a house payment. I had a car. I'd already been teaching a while. So I had to keep up some things. But um, it was amazing that we got a full ride there. And most people that were in the music department, whether they sang or played an instrument, or dancers for fine arts, for theater, musical theater, almost everybody was on at least half, if not a full scholarship. So you don't have to be afraid of those expensive private schools like TCU and SMU, for example, because they actually have a lot more money than the less expensive state schools. Um, for example, when I auditioned for UNT and TCU, UNT offered me $1,000 a year. TCU offered me $20,000 a year. And I remember crying because I thought, they don't want me. The school I want the most only gave me $1,000. And then come to find out it's because it's so much cheaper. That is a lot of money for UNT. But for TCU, $20,000 is about the same as $1,000 for UNT. So just know that you can apply places. And if you've got an incredible fine arts talent,